ever since Minecraft started getting bigger, I always wanted to like know the lore of Minecraft, but I'm not that smart, I'm incredibly stupid, uh, so <laughs> I lived off of MatPat's theories for how long? I took whatever he said as law because, hey, it made sense. But the other day I was walking around in my garden like I usually do, kind of compressing my thoughts, and I realized something, something that no one had really taken full advantage of. Monster spawners. I mean, they serve no gameplay purpose. I mean, sure, dungeons and all that jazz, but most of the spawners, especially zombie and skeleton spawners, don't serve a purpose. And lore-wise, spawners don't make any sense. I mean, why would humans place spawners down in the mines where they need to go to mine? I mean, it's obvious that they did place the spawners. They're, they're blocks. They're, they've been placed. Look at the fortress and how blaze spawners are placed on a pedestal and how they are, you know, used to spawn. So that got me thinking. Why are spawners doing this? Why are there spider spawners down in the depths of the mines, which are important to, you know, a human's infrastructure to get materials and to grow larger? And I think I have figured it out. I think I have figured out the true story of Minecraft. Just from the spawners alone. This video I will be telling you the story of Minecraft, about capitalism, the destruction of humanity, and the everlasting infection of progress. Fair warning before we get into the video. Minecraft theorizing is, I think, some of the loosest theorizing ever. Because there's no canon canon, there's no text in the game, besides a few places, Basically, we're just playing connect the dots. If you don't think the dots connect, that's fine. You can have your opinion. I think Minecraft theorizing is some of the most open-ended theorizing in the history of the world. No matter what point I can make, someone will say that doesn't make any sense because of this point. Like, any map path theories can be deconstructed. It's all based on your thought process and how you think the dots connect because there is no actual correlation between anything. It's a sandbox game. It doesn't have that much lore. And personally, I don't think Mojang knows the story of Minecraft. Maybe they have a somewhat idea of the story and they agree on that, but the details I don't think they have. But with that out of the way, if you're ready to jump in and be amazed by my fucking big brain, then let's go. I will be explaining Minecraft in chronological order through the use of eras. Each era, I will explain how some blocks got there and all that jazz. Right? Got it? Okay. Peace. A long, long time ago, humans lived in peace, living mainly off the land and living in small groups. They didn't really want to build anything, they didn't want to destroy anything, they were hunter-gatherers, and they respected the environment. But one day, somehow, someone discovered a portal. A portal to a new world. And everything changed. Now, how am I sure that that actually happened? Now, this is the explaining bit. I'm going to go in chronological order and stop every error to explain my thought process. So, how do I know they lived in peace? Because, what else? Did they just evolve to live in war? No, that doesn't make any sense. And it's clear that humans went to the nether to build nether fortresses, bastions, all that jazz. That's just kind of an agreed thing. So let's get on with an actual new bit of the theory. The Uprising Humans slowly become infatuated with this new dimension, creating the first ever structures, the bastions. They brung pigs, sheep, cows, everything. Humans even moved directly into the nether, they wanted to look around and discover what this place really had to offer. However, they discovered something. Something new, something they had never seen before. Soul Sand. Not only did Soul Sand slow you down when you walked on it, but it also grew a fungi. It grew netherwort, which the pigs and sheep began eating and started to mutate. This led to humans beginning to experiment with it eventually realizing the magical potential of this block. Humans could have even eaten this nether wart and become smarter because of it with bigger brains. And so the experimenting began. Now how do I know all of this happened? Okay, so bastions are far older than fortresses due to the 
those were the old days, referencing possibly that our character has been here. Oh, uh, that's a theory. That's a theory for the future. <laughs> Remember that. We know that ghasts and piglins aren't native to the Nether for some reason. Piglins show traits of humans, which the, the theory is that pigs were brought into the Nether and slowly evolved. But if you bring a gas into the overworld and then kill it, it states in the advancement that you're bringing a gas home and then killing it. So the gas originates in the overworld, although what animal it originates from, I am not sure. The beginning? Humans kept experimenting with soul sand, and eventually they discovered what created this block. When something died on top of it, their souls were absorbed into the block. When you stand on soul sand, slowly but surely, your soul is being sucked into the ground. But now they've realized something. They can harness the power of a soul. Okay, okay, quick tangent on what the fuck is the afterlife in Minecraft? This has nothing to do with the greater theory, this is just my headcanon, so hold on. When a creature dies, it drops XP and something on its body. Cows drop leather and meat, sheep drop wool and meat, stuff like that, right? But the main carcass of the animal disappears, like it just vanishes. When you kill an animal, it doesn't leave behind bones, it just vanishes out of nowhere. I think because when something dies, their soul instantly leaves their body. But everything that is excess, like excess meat or excess leather, is left behind on the mortal realm, the, the physical plane. We'll get a little bit more into that later, but let's go back to the actual theory. After the humans realize they have almost infinite power since they can use soul energy, they build fortresses, which they use to just experiment on creatures and soul sand. Eventually, after possibly many years, they find something. They develop a machine. A machine so powerful it changes history. A machine that can create infinite false life. A machine called a spawner. Made from soul sand and netherite. Oh wait, yeah, where does netherite come from? Hold on, uh, another tangent, I know, hold on with me, sorry. Netherite is found in this thing called ancient debris, which is found rarely throughout the world. And it's found underground, never exposed to air. Which is odd, because ancient debris sounds like, well, it's a debris of a fallen civilization. Possibly the ancient humans could have used to build with netherite. Maybe netherite was incredibly plentiful when they got to the nether, but as time went on, they mined it all up, only leaving chunks of netherite in their old builds. Uh, but here's the thing. Uh, the thing is that it doesn't make sense because, like I said, netherite is underground and it's, you know, not there's no air pocket, there's no remnants of something there. Although ancient debris can be found in bastions, which can prove the fact that bastions were used. Uh, but, but then, unless the nether is growing, which is a theory for a different day because I have a whole theory differently about the nether, but anyway, this is about the history of humans. If you want a video just about the nether and how I think the nether is fucking really weird, um, I don't know, hit... 11 likes, let's go. Uh, back to the theory. Using the spawners, they can create infinite false life. Experimenting with the spawners still, they decide to put a pig inside of the spawner. This allows them to duplicate the pig infinitely. So now they have created something that can create infinite mass out of nothing. Using this, they create blazes. Which is, also, which is obviously false life because blazes are made of metal. Using blazes, they can now develop potions easier. And now that potions are this easily accessible thing using nether wart and blaze powder and all this crazy shit, a new age of development begins as humans can now get strength and collect more blocks and have underwater breathing so they start developing temples. They create desert temples, o ocean temples, all that jazz. Now, an explanation for all of this is the a terrible fortress advancement that you get when entering a fortress. Why is it terrible? Possibly because it was used for horrifying experiments with both human and animal life. And possibly our character remembers the history of the world and realizes the darkness that comes from the fortress. We'll get back to that later. The beginning. 
humans continue to experiment until they decide to kill someone. They discover that how humans turn into wither skeletons when they die on top of soul soil. Or soul sand. Then using the wither skeletons, they create something. An abomination. The wither. Now, at this point, humans have discovered enchants, and have become far more powerful, so they kill the wither. It isn't this catastrophic thing, the wither is actually pretty easily killed. But now they have a wither star, and this is the moment where it all goes to shit. Because this is the moment where humans realise that the wither, not only being made of human corpses, which is pretty fucked up, also is just too powerful. It's a weapon and can be used for mass destruction, and out of fear, humans have a civil war in the nether. Half of humanity sees the wither as an evolution, and to create more power and to make them gods, while another half sees it as an abomination to nature and it should just be left alone, with soul sand and spawners should be destroyed. So, the peacefuls, as we'll call them, run to the bastions, where, of course, the warlord humans decide to attack them, possibly even using withers. The fall of man. Humans fall into a great war. Constant fighting and death creates soul sand valleys. Valleys of dead humans, transforming into wither skeletons and transforming this place into this like large area of soul soil. But the warlord humans found something. They found a creature. A being called Endermen. Now at this point, Endermen were far more powerful because they could actually teleport between dimensions. This is proof because of the warped forest, which is warped because of the Endermen, weakening the trans-dimensional fucking rips in time and space. Humans found these incredibly powerful creatures that could pick up blocks and they saw a threat. Not only were the warlords dealing with these peacefuls that didn't want evolution, but now they knew that there was a separate dimension with these hyper-intelligent creatures that could kill them. And they did the only thing that they could do. They used them, bartered with them, got endstone from their dimension, and came back and decided to create a portal using the endstone and this strange green material which almost looks like Ender Ore, baby. They realize this and they create the strongholds with the portals, planning on invading and slaughtering an entire dimension. All right, explanation time. Um, here are some, just some things. How did Endermen get to the overworld if they didn't warp in? They probably came through the portals. There are many portals uh, that the humans created. And the reason why I think they bartered with the Enderman is because the end portal is made out of endstone. How do you get endstone without going to the end? It doesn't make any fucking sense, Minecraft. The end. After the liberation, humanity decided to invade the third dimension, to become all powerful, to explore, to ravage the land, and to continue. Humanity tore more apart, the Peacefuls begged them not to commit this genocide, the Warlords called them weak and sent parties to hunt them down. To punish them for pushing back against their plans, the Warlords sent an apocalypse. They began placing spawners. These created thousands of sentient zombies and skeletons. They placed spawners in the dungeons and inside of their mines so they couldn't get resources to fight back. The peaceful humans escaped, admitting defeat. The warlords broke all the portals to the nether so they could never rise up and attack the warlords again. The peaceful humans used the last of their building ability and power to create iron golems to protect them from the barrage of zombies, skeletons, and spiders. The warlords decided to leave, closing the portal to the end behind them and entering a new dimension. Now, I think this is the best example of how the spawners could get there, because why on earth would humans place spawners that spawn zombies and skeletons? It's obvious that the human, the warlords, placed these to create distress and pain. I mean, how else would, would that work? The aftermath. The warlords, scared that the peace wars will follow them and try and kill them, create a guardian, the ender dragon, using their power to create this incredibly powerful dragon that also could control the Endermen, weakening their powers and causing them permanent torment. 
they travel out, building end ships and end cities, using the dragon to mind control the endermen and allowing them to slaughter them. Meanwhile, the peacefuls fall into monotony, locking their arms away, promising to forever be pacifists. Explanation time. They end the dragon's weird behavior of flying around and attacking you, even though, you know, like it doesn't really attack anything else. Also, when you kill it, it has the free the end. This advancement suggests that somehow the end was trapped by this ender dragon, and the way it dies doesn't die like a normal creature. It dies like it had incredible amounts of power put into it, but maybe it was put into it on purpose. Either the ender dragon was created by the ancient humans, or the ender dragon was mind controlled by the ancient humans. But how are you so sure that the humans had anything to do with the ender dragon? Well, Look at the end island. Look at these end crystals. The end crystals are made by humans. We can make end crystals. The perch that the dragon sits on is made of bedrock, which doesn't spawn naturally like that. It was placed there by the fucking ancients, which means the ancients had the ability to use bedrock. They could control bedrock. They created the entire island, they built up the obsidian pillars, they created the end crystals, they made the end island that you spawn in to protect them. Only after you kill the end, I mean kill the ender dragon, only after you kill the ender dragon can you leave and go to the true end islands. Modern day. It has been possibly thousands of years. Villagers have forgotten to time about how they built everything and how they could protect themselves with weapons and armor. Now they rely on iron golems and basic trading. Pillagers, which were the people sent to kill the Peacefuls, also did the same thing. They devolved, forgetting everything about their past and just knowing violence and treachery. But what about you? You spawn there, just in the middle of nowhere, randomly, with health and no knowledge. If you look at your knowledge book, there's nothing there, you don't know how to craft anything. That kind of reminds me of something. Something called amnesia. And also, you aren't normal. Now let's go into explaining who you are. Who is Steve and who is Alex? When you go into Minecraft, who are you? It's clear that you don't look like anyone else. Villagers and pillagers evolved to, you know, be them. But you, you are an ancient builder. How is this possible? How are you here after thousands, thousands, tens of thousands possibly of years? How are you there with no memory of how to craft or build? That is actually kind of simple to answer. Although it requires a little bit of stretching. You are an ancient. An ancient that is immortal. Think about it. Humans have developed a way of becoming immortal. When you die in Minecraft, you can respawn at your bed. Humans, if they had the power to create the Ender Dragon, and of course the respawn anchor, it's obvious that humans somehow managed to create a way that when you died, you simply reappeared back at your bed. Which means that you could easily be thousands of years old as Steve. Every time you die, you simply just respawn at the bed. Halting aging, possibly. And it makes sense that you've actually seen all of this and been through all of it. As you see more, you remember more. Those were the old days in the Bastions when humans weren't fighting each other. The terrible fortress when they were experimenting, possibly even on you. The biggest evidence for this is when you spawn the wither, it states the beginning, question mark, like something is coming to your brain, and when you kill the wither, it states the beginning, because you realize that was the beginning of it all. That was the beginning of your story, of you traveling to the end, of you going through into the fourth dimension, and even further. When every advancement is you remembering things, you have been sent back from wherever you came from to the overworld for an unknown reason, and you're remembering. Somehow the, ma the machine or, or power or magic that sent you back to the overworld wiped your memory. This could have been possibly a punishment from the other warlords, or maybe the other warlords were dying out and sent you back into the overworld to collect materials and come back to them but something must have gone wrong and your memory was wiped. This is why you are so powerful. This is why you can carry an infinite amount of inventory because you are, you aren't natural. You are been developed and experimented on and now you are infinitely strong with infinite lives 
and you know how to craft these amazing things, and yet you don't do anything about it. You have this solid expression on your face of not happiness, not sadness, but just you look. You look around your surroundings and you see you're remembering things. You can only break the spawners because you're that strong. No one else can mine anymore or use anything because they've just devolved. They've stopped using these intelligent mechanisms and ways of working and they've just boiled down to their most basic places. Villagers live, wake up, go to bed, try not to die. Pillagers attempt to kill everyone. And it's weird how raids only start when you enter a village, almost like you have some kind of special property. I mean, I know you kill the pillager, then you get bad omen, and then the raid happens. So I guess maybe maybe it's just anyone who kills them in villages can't fight back, but then, why don't iron golems get bad? I'm confused. But it makes sense. You, as Steve, you are not a pillager. You are not a villager. You are an ancient human. You are someone who possibly built the world, that you built the fortresses, you built the bastions, you helped all of that, you could have even built the monuments. That's how you know how to create fucking netherite, because you were there, you knew everything. The reason why you go into the end is possibly because you gain a conscience, you realise what you what they've done is horrifying, and how you need to fix it by killing the ender dragon and freeing the enderman. Speaking of enderman, like, the Endermen clearly go into this theory, if you look the Endermen into the eyes, they despise you because they can just remember the Ancients and how they treated them so harshly and slaughtered so many. There's evidence of this because piglins have pearls, possibly because there were hundreds of pearls lying around after the Great War, and how humans not only killed Endermen but also killed other humans, and it was just Jesus Christ. Piglins learned how to fight because they saw the war. Even after you save Enderman, they can't forgive you because they have lived thousands of years. Possibly Enderman can't even die of old age, so they've just been mind controlled this whole time, not being able to, you know, do that much. That's why they can only pick up certain blocks because they've been limited in their power. They just do it because, well, they remember doing it back in the old days. Endermen can speak human somewhat because they've learned because of the amount of humans they've been around. Like, what's up? How's it going? All that jazz. Like, they, they've learned that because they've been around people. But then there's the question of where are the humans? Where are they? Did they not turn into Endermen like fucking Matt Pat and everyone else says? No, I don't think they did turn into, hum into Endermen. I think they kept going. I think after they reached the end, they found a way to go to a fourth dimension. Mojang has stated they want to find a fourth dimension after they fix the previous three. And I promise you, when we get the fourth dimension, there will be remnants of human life there. Not because humans turned into Endermen, but because humans travelled past the end and went to new dimensions. Getting stronger and stronger and stronger and possibly becoming gods. So here are just some random questions I didn't get to fit right into the video, but I'm just gonna answer quickly here, like a quick fire thing. Why do zombies and skeletons burn? I think it's because spawners are made out of soul sand and slowly spawn infinite entities. If something is spawning infinite amounts from just a limited amount of souls, I think maybe each zombie and spider and all that jazz has just not as much soul energy as it needs to be, and possibly due to temperature, when the sun hits them, they burn because they're not structurally sound. Were the ancients really that strong to create ender dragons and place bedrock? I mean, please explain the perch to me, explain the portal, explain the gods, explain the end island without human interaction. We even see pillagers, thousands of years later, still trying to emulate their brethren by creating totems of undying, elytras, and trying to make bedrock somehow? How are you sure that you're, we're an ancient? Well, because of the advancements. The advancements are told from the perspective of someone remembering them. Those were the old, those were the good days, or the beginning, question mark, or free the, it all comes from our character remembering. Now here's some questions from Anonymous Secret. What even is the end? It's a dimension similar to the overworld or the nether. What is bedrock? Bedrock is, is a block. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's either created by a void touching normal blocks or possibly due to pressure. Or it could be like the crust of the earth or something. Who are Steve and Alex? I think I answered that in this video. 
there are ancients, ancient builders from thousands of years past that somehow spawn back into the overworld and slowly remember what they've done throughout the game. The biggest question is who are the gods? When you pass through the end portal and you see the end credits, like who are the gods? Who are the gods there? They could possibly be ancients or they could literally just be the gods of Minecraft, I'm not sure. And that is M Minecraft. This is personally my favorite headcanon and I think I'm just gonna stick with this. If you have any like ideas that disprove this theory, please put them down below. I would like to make a, a part two at some point to kind of say what I think, you know, explains the theory. Now, of course, there, there are some things that, you know, I didn't fit into this video because I didn't want it to be fucking four hours long, like magma cubes were created to create magma cream so that they didn't burn in lava and all that jazz, or how possibly netherite was created due to a combination of different things, and the original story of Notch and how the red dragon was going to fit into it all, all the egg and how the dragon's egg turns into it and how he can't hatch it yet, and, you know, stuff like that. There's a bunch of stuff that I could explain, but that'll take a long ass time, and this video will be a pain in the ass to edit already. I just broke down the whole thing of Minecraft. Suck it, Matt Pat. I did it first. Let's go.